Hi, my name is Will. Uh, I'm a developer at Grand New Border. Um, I am the media director on AIG in Nebraska, which is like a design uh, group of people trying to make sure that designers have an easy way to, for me, my personal goal is to make it so that designers are good coders or at least understand them. Um, so I, another big thing that I do is um, I'm building a search engine and social platform called Hubdia. Uh, basically what it does is it's a way to make it so that you can sync all your stuff all across the internet. It's literally like a Google for you. Um, if you were going to search like, you know, uh, Cole, what's your last name? Boss. Boss. If you were going to search Cole Boss, you would get all the stuff uh, that you would want, um, but uh, all, all the stuff related to you. But the problem is, like, it's not very focused on, it's not what you want people to see, probably. So my goal is to swap, switch that, make it so that it's easier for uh, people who are interested in you to see the stuff that you want them to see. Um, so with that, I'm building a social platform. And social platforms need something like ridiculously important, and that's called engagement. Obviously, you all know that. <laughs> but engagement for a social platform means much. So, um, that, and that means I can pay more people to be involved. So, when it comes to engagement, one of the things that's ridiculously important is performance. And uh, HTTP is the underlying, um, okay, no, let me, let me connect that a little better. Uh, performance is hard to nail because uh, HTTP 1 Point one, which is the current version, 15 years old, is hacked. And we'll see it soon. It's really bad. Um, just to put it in some real context. So I'm going to talk about HTTP2. Uh, so the biggest thing, I think, is why change HTTP? Um, it's a, a, a fundamental protocol to how we exchange or have a conversation, or how servers and clients have a conversation about what things they need when you load a site. That's pretty much what HTTP is responsible for. Um, and it does that over TCP. Um, TCP is just a way to say, hey, I want to make a connection to a, a different computer, and I want to open a tunnel so that you can just beam information to me, or beam, let me beam information to you. So the problem is HTTP was built uh, uh, was as, as a as a, a protocol, it was released 15 years ago. And the internet has changed. Uh, not just the internet, but the things that are connected to it, and also uh, a lot of the problems, they still exist, carried over, um, but they haven't, they haven't really evolved. So the goal is to fix a lot of these. The web changed. Um, the RFC is about 15 years old, June 1999. Let me make sure I got it. Okay. So the web changed. Um, it changed in a lot of different ways, and some of the key ways that it changed is that it's heavier. So what that means is, like four years ago, you would download a site that would be 600 kilobytes, which is enough to like fit on a floppy disk. <laughs> and nowadays, uh, average is about 1.5 megabytes, um, and so that's double four years. So what could happen with uh, new emerging types of technology is that that could double once again, and it could double again. If you're looking at it from Moore's Law perspective, but the goal is to not have that for a performance engineer, um, performance engineer, uh, a good web developer. <laughs> um, so it's heavier. Um, it's also more interactive. What that means is you have things like web sockets that you can beam so much information back and forth really fast, and you can have this great conversation. Um, but it's it's much more uh, chattier. With the, a, a client server is, or a client is much more chattier with a server. It's always talking and always asking for stuff. That means it's opening a lot of TCP connections, and TCP is really important here because it's like the the main. Uh, it is it's the it's what HTTP is built on top of. To make sure that information is sent on the wire. I said it again, but I gotta like really make sure that that's expressed in a good way. Uh, it's mobile, which means you have smaller devices that really can't handle the kind of performance or, or heavier uh, um, uh, code that's executed than 
what a desktop can handle. Uh, can handle. Um, at the same time, uh, mobile is literally all over the world. <laughs> it can be in any place. It can be on 3G, LTE. It can be on a cellular network that's, what is it, like 2G? It can be less than that. It can be really, really uh, hard to get a heavy site that's really interactive on your mobile phone when you're in uh, Africa, for example. So that's a really big deal. And with a 15-year-old spec that's HTTP 1.1, you want to make it so that that kind of situation wouldn't wouldn't exist. Something that uh, makes the conversation between a, a client and a server really, really um, uh, fruitful. I'm going to say fruitful for performance. Also, we have Internet of Things. So not only do we have uh, mobile where people are looking at a phone or any other of these different kinds of devices, we also have servers talking to each other. Um, at, at all these different times that we, uh, an individual, can't see uh, any sort of performance-related issue, but it could mean, you know, uh, a big deal if you have, well, if you have a lot of TCP connections open um, on a network, what could happen is you get a lot of uh, congestion and poor performance on the network for all these different uh, 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 servers and so so, Internet of Things. In total, we have four generally. Uh, it's heavier, it's more interactive, it's mobile. Uh, Internet of Things is coming. Uh, like I said earlier, performance equals attention equals mind. Oh, so another thing that I'm going to say, actually, honestly, is um, I'm trying, and this might not work, and that's totally okay. Uh, I am trying to give a presentation where there's no problem. I want to make sure that this is accessible to anyone. Hopefully it is. If it's not, and I'm like falling down, like uh, I, I, I built in like a question section so you can ask anything um, and start a real conversation, and not just me, you know, spouting stuff at you because this is going to be like this is really fundamental. Everyone has to understand it. So my goal is to do that. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> so performance equals attention equals money. Um, that's general. That's why actually like performance. Uh, 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 conferences exist. That's why we all try to make sure that we're using the latest, most up-to-date code. That's simple. That's not going to, you know, cause anything, any, any um, gaps or stutters while you're uh, on on a device where your site is working. Um, so, for example, okay. So, underlying all of that, essentially, performance is you want to eliminate requests. Requests. You want to make sure that you are requesting as less as possible. So that could mean spriting a lot of your images, putting it in one image, and then just using CSS to like make a window so that you're only downloading one image versus a lot. Does that make sense? Uh, who? I'm going to circle back on a question I should have asked at the beginning. Who here is a front-end engineer? Or who writes front-end code? Okay. Who writes back-end code? Who is a network administrator? <laughs> All right, there's really a lot of people. Here. <laughs> um, who here is uh, uh, infrastructure? Um, who here? Um, Internet of Things. Who's played with that? Okay. So essentially, this is going to affect literally everyone, um, and. It would obviously Internet of Things, uh, a, a device for the front end engineers. This is going to be ridiculously important for you to understand. Um, every time you ask for an image, not every time, generally, when you ask for a resource, it opens a TCP connection. It uh, it grabs that thing. Uh, if the server the server says, "Okay, cool, thanks for asking me," then it says, "Okay, here's the item." That you need that was in the HTML that you initially uh, downloaded, for example. Um, so you can have like a hundred images, and what that means is you're going to uh, open a hundred TCP connections, and uh, that's like that is fatal for performance when it comes to downloading, especially um, on a really congested network where you have a lot of devices that are also going through um, to, to grab as much as possible. 
uh, so like 15 different computers that are downloading 100 different images on, uh, on you know, eight, uh, 15 different sites is going to like really mess up your network. Um, so the idea for performance is a limited enterprise. We have a lot of different techniques to do this. One of them I already hit was spriting. And spriting, literally, you uh, jam pack all your images into one, and then uh, one image, and then you use CSS to make a window. And that means you download only one image, which is really nice for performance right now, nice if you want. We use inlining, which is like you base 64 code at an image, a JPEG, and then what that does, and then you just place it um, inside of the HTML. So you literally force the image to be immediately downloaded in a way. Um, that'll make a lot more sense as we move on into like what HTTP2 really uh, can do, the features that it has. So we can inline stuff like SVG or base64 encoded images. Uh, we can concatenate a lot of JavaScript, so it makes it so that we can't build modular stuff. Um, we have to, again, we're trying to eliminate as many requests as possible. So we combine a bunch of JavaScript and then say, here's one file. And then we have sharding, which is like when you have a, a video that's split up into different um, different segments that's hosted on different uh, uh, places, um, uh, you can you can just download all of those uh, simultaneously. And these are technically hacks. Um, these are hacks because the internet shouldn't be made to make it so that you have to not, you have to have adjustments in your workflow. Uh, and then at the same time, the underlying technology should be able to handle uh, as a, a, you know, you downloading 100 different images uh, and, and it, it, should, it should just be built correctly, right, so that you don't have to hack. I mean, this is good. Hacks are awesome because hacks, they, what they do is they, it's like, this is a clever solution uh, to a real problem in an underlying technology. That's great. Let's solve it. Um, so, HTTP2, okay, well, <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> HTTP1, I'm going to hit this real quick, HTTP1 works uh, through TCP. Uh, requests are expensive because of TCP. We're not using it right. Um, number one, TCP 1 1 is uh, using, or HTTP is using TCP wrong. Um, HTTP flows are, you know, short and bursty like those 100 images. It opens, closes, and then it's uh, 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 cold. And then it opens, it's warm, it uh, grabs the image, downloads, closes. And servers and browsers, they're only built. Well, browsers are only built to handle what in a second. Um, so when your HTML needs a file, the client opens a TCP connection to your server through HTTP. The server response says, yep, here's the file, and starts sending chunks of that file in packets until uh, the client has the entire thing. The client, after it has everything, it says thanks and closes the, closes the TCP connection. Um, TCP connections exhibit a slow start when it opens. So what that means is when you open a TCP connection, literally, um, it takes a few packets to get the stuff that's most important. Then, uh, it takes a few packets to really gear up to the speed that it needs to, or that it's, that it's going to be allowed through the network from that server to that client. So it goes, uh, and then it's in, and it's downloading really fast. Um, it takes a few, what that means technically is it takes a few packets until the TCP connection has reached its throughput peak. Uh, slow start exists to combat. Oops. Slow start it, uh, exists to combat network congestion. It's a double-edged performance sword because you need network. Uh, you, you need you need to make sure that your network doesn't get congested. Otherwise, you just have a bunch of data on your site that it doesn't or on, in, inside of your network that just doesn't know where it needs to go. And that can be on the, uh, the, the server side or the client side. The client being a browser. Um, or uh, and your your home network versus uh, uh, a bunch of different servers that have a bunch of different information that you can get to where it needs to get to. Same things. So it's really good, um, but it means that you can only have four to eight connections uh, that are open and.
That's the next. That's the next one. State of the art browsers. <laughs> browsers allow four to eight open active connections at a time. Um, uh, for information, okay. So TCP slow start typical requests per page. In late 2014, it was an average of about 90 to 100 uh, requests. That means literally, you make an HTML document, it has 100 images. It, that's that's the average generally. Um, and uh, page sizes were 1.5 megabytes-ish. Uh, 2010, the average was 55 to 65 requests uh, per site, uh, per page, at 600K. So it was, like I said, just enough to fit on a block uh, block uh, But browsers guess. Um, because HTTP 1 was 1.1, was the way that it was written was really uh, not clear, not concise. It didn't say, it didn't explicitly say, this is where the responsibility lies for the server in when you're requesting an image or a, a, a resource, an asset. And this is where the responsibility lies for a, uh, uh, a browser. This is where the conversations should start and end. Uh, so browsers are doing a lot of guessing, and that means a lot of bad code inside of the browser, that means a lot of processing, and that means a non site. Um, so that's also the TCP headline blocking. The reason that browsers only have, one of the reasons that browsers only have four eight active connection tokens at a time is because of this. Um, it's just a combat network congestion, uh, and it really helps. Uh, you need network congestion. Um, I don't remember what the, 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 the actual thing that delegates network congestion to make sure that it doesn't exist anymore. Um, HTTP 1.1 is designed to identify what files are important on the client end. Very confusing about where responsibilities lie. So this is a big problem. Basically, it doesn't use it right. TCP. Uh, TCP slow start kicks in often, and browsers need to make educated guesses about a bunch of stuff. And they have made like ridiculously good educated guesses. Um, stuff like when um, I'm not something like ridiculously abstract, and then everybody's going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so what's HTTP2? Initially, in 2010 or 11, it was going to be a rewrite of uh, RFC uh, 2616. Uh, that's HTTP11. And um, what happened after a year was Google was building speed. And so they released it, and uh, they saw a lot of really good feedback from the community. And though that community was like people from Yahoo, people from uh, people from Google, and just uh, network engineers and front end engineers generally, and uh, it was it was it was so well that they opened it up and said, "Hey!" And there's other people who were trying to, trying to do a sort of HTTP uh, protocol rewrite. There were there were about four others that were trying to do it, um, but. They had, they had a meeting, they said, okay, everyone bring your, um, bring your ideas to the table, and they, they said, uh, uh, Google, bring, Google offered Speedy, and then uh, from there, the IETF, uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, they said, okay, we're going to use that, because it was the most uh, widely, uh, widely used, it was the most supported, um, and it worked. It just worked. Um, so Google did Speedy, brought it to the IETF, and it became HTTP2, which as of May 15th, uh, this last week or so, right? Yeah. Um, it became RFC uh, 7540 um, as of, I think, four years' work. Uh, so it was it was done for parity, speed, cleanup, security, and much more. The technical goal is to take advantage of one TCP connection. So when you download a really big file, uh, what that does is it opens one TCP connection and you have like a, a three gig file that's being downloaded and it just keeps streaming you that stuff. You only have one instance of where a TCP, uh, 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 the slow start occurs and then you're just beaming data just as fast as possible. Then you close it. The idea is to make it so that you download, you ask for a site, everything, assets, images, JavaScript, um, CSS, uh, uh, HTML, any sort of AJAX information is all being in that one TCP 
connection and then closes it if you need it. And you have more control if you want to be more stuff through. So kind of like a WebSockets idea, um, but it's more for the uh, how fast can you download this stuff um, and how fast can you get uh, and how securely can you get, can you get it sent over. It's backward and compatible. So what that means is um, they, when he gave that example of the HTTP uh, slash 1.1, one, uh, 101, this is a, re uh, a request header, um, status header. That is plain text. Um, they got rid of that. It's now binary, like ones and zeros. And so that means that it's smaller, but it's not readable, and servers are going to have, you're going to have like new Apache servers that are built specifically to understand HTTP2. Uh, for example, there's other implementations. So how does HTTP work? HTTP2 work? Um, so like I said, everything is sent on one TCP connection. Everything should work like normal, all the APIs, but you're going to have like new buttons, um, new like things to play with, uh, stuff to mess around with, um, but it should all still be the same. So like you have, for example, PHP or Ruby, you have a GET request, a GET request is going to work just the exact same. You have headers that you want to read, that those headers are going to read uh, the understood the exact same. The server is going to have to translate it so that it's more plain text for you, but it's it should work like 100% out of the box. I say should, just in case. Uh, some of the features of HTTP2, uh, prioritization. Prioritization is fucking awesome. Basically, it's seriously super cool. So you know how, let's say uh, I open Facebook up in uh, five different tabs. I have one, it's like crazy, you're just shaking your head like, no. Um, <laughs> I, I have that one tab selected that was initially there, and then four other tabs that are in the background. Prioritization in one example is uh, the tab that's active, the browser now, instead of making a lot of assumptions, it doesn't have to deal with assumptions, and it has more granular control over what, uh, what is being sent of the TCP connection. So we can say, actually, fuck this other, these other four tabs. I just want, one, I, I want everything inside of this one tab as fast as possible, because that's what they care about. That's what they're looking at right now. So they, you can prioritize what assets are being sent. Uh, you can prioritize everything over the connection. Um, flow control. What this means is basically, if you were getting a lot of like, uh, maybe you don't want to send some, you basically you have granular control over the files, the assets that you can send as a backend engineer. You can say backend or frontend engineer, uh, developer, whatever. Um, <laughs> as a developer, <laughs> you can say, I want to make sure that this person gets this as soon as possible, but it's not going to like, mess anything up if they get this. Um, there's sort of, uh, there's there's more flow for, it's mostly for um, asset pipelining and stuff like that. Um, header compression through HPAC initially. So this is really cool because what this does is you can have multiple, okay, so let's say you load um, when you load those 100 images that are pulled down from, let's say, Facebook, uh, you have 100 images. In those images, the, uh, header, uh, the headers always have the same repeated text. They have cookies, they have, um, they have a lot of uh, information about what the server is, maybe. They have information about if this request was successful, etc. But after the first HTML download, you, all of those, so you, you download the HTML. The headers are totally unique. Every single character in the header is completely unique. You move on to the next, like the, the uh, style.css file. Um, probably about 20% of the characters inside of that header is going to be unique. Um, everything else is going to be the same as the HTML document that was initially downloaded. You move on to the next JavaScript file, for example, you're going to have uh, maybe uh, let's move on to another CSS file. You're going to have only the name of the CSS file is changed. It's not style.css, it's uh, module1.css. That's the only thing that's changed. So what we have right now, we have a lot of stuff that's just duplicated. Really for no reason. 
Header compression, what it does is it kind of uses what GZIP does. Um, it's more secure. It was initially GZIP, but security people found something called Crime, where you could basically, like, uh, it, circling back, age back, what it does is it smashes all the repeated stuff so that you, your headers that are being sent for all of your different assets on all of your different, um, uh, 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 for all of your different assets are ridiculously compressed, and it, it saves so much. It saves about 80% um, per initial uh, loads of those assets. So from that, uh, it was initially called GZIP, and this was when it was still in speedy sort of mode, but they found that when you put, like, you could inject uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's like, let's let's say that's a password, and uh, a, a bad guy could inject A, B, C, and then C, O. Uh, that URL, after, after all this has been sort of, uh, 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 <laughs> after the algorithm has done its work, you can inject that thing and basically you can find out if someone has, uh, if someone has a specific string, you can find someone's password. You, you have to do like a, a lot of requests, but the security people said, no, we can't do G GZIP, we have to do HPAC. HPAC is uh, RFC 74, uh, 7541. It's right after the HTTP2 uh, RFC, and it's uh, just a really good, uh, highly secure. Um, I uh, was it glitched in the hash algorithm. Yeah. See, that's the one I was trying to say. But I was like, <laughs> Which is a run length encoding reveals information about what was inside, what was being encoded. I don't, I don't know. If, if you know that Joe Smith hashes the same as Will Die, yeah. and you put in Joe Smith and you get something, then you know Will Die's that. Yeah. Oh, it's not hashing memory. It's not hashing closeness. It would be uh, like, it would be. Um, I don't same words. It's, it's, you gotta, you got to look at the, like, the exact same characters. It would, it would be uh, collisions, whatever. I'm starting to get off. Okay. Okay. Sorry. The general idea is the server knows what the secret password is and uses the whole data to sort of create a zipped up file. And just in general in security, unless you really, 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 really think it through about all the security implications, you'll get it wrong. And GZIP do it is made about security implications and expect it. So I gotta work on that. <laughs> um, TLS is gonna be mandatory. Uh, we're kind of seeing this with uh, Google uh, pushing. Um, TLS is, if you don't know, uh, TLS is uh, the SSL replacement after uh, what was it? The 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 they heart bleed. Heart bleed. Heart bleed. Heart bleed. It was heart bleed and Google bleed, <laughs> which uh, Google bleed really actually like put the state in um, SSL, so we use TLS, uh, it's secure, and so from now on, um, well, moving forward, when you have a HTTP2, <laughs> you really need to have um, TLS, it's going to be mandatory. So what that means is just by an SSL cert, which should be called a fucking TLS cert, but whatever. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, like I said, uh, this was really, well, I didn't say this actually, this part. This was put together pretty, pretty like, fast, um, and I, I think it's glaringly obvious that I didn't do my best, but what I want to do is I want to open it up for questions, like, what kind of things uh, is this going to do for you as a developer, and where was I uh, maybe not super clear, and what kind of things would you like to uh, uh, maybe have clarified? Does anyone have Go. I guess that's one of the adoption of this on. So basically, from what I understand, it's obviously, or I should say obviously, from what I understand is that servers, like, for example, like, if I, if I host myself through GoDaddy or DreamHost, or would they have to first comply with, or would they first have to add the HTTP to spec or whatever to their system, or is it once it comes out, all the internet uses it, or how, how does this really work? And also, same with browsers, I understand, like, Older versions, I like Chrome, it seemed like it was, it was obvious by Google. 
is pretty up to date and sort of some of the others. But how's that? How does that work on the both the host and or both the server and the the client marrying or both communicating this HTTP two <coughs> spec together? That was a very long. No, that's a perfect question because uh, it puts up a lot of good stuff. So, number one, um, let's talk servers first. Server implementation is coming. Um, uh, it's already like it's here. It's here. <laughs> it's, it's here in uh, like Go, C++. It's here in so many different languages. Um, let me bring up the HTTP two site because they have implementation. Oh, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Just a very active Twitter user. Yeah. Yeah, the HTTP might be dead. So uh Akamai has been a really big like uh, group of people pushing this. They're a CDN. I learned that in the car here. Um, <laughs> uh, Apache, uh, there's C++, um, NPN negotiations are not further dead. When HTTP2 goes up, it's going to be a, uh, ALPN negotiations. Now, what that means, I don't know. If you would like to expand on it, I'd be happy to hear, but let me finish this real quick. <laughs> so, um, uh, we have a Node, we have Java, uh, Ruby, Haskell. Um, this is the node. This is the node HTTP two. Um, so it's already here. The, the problem with a lot of these, also Wireshark, because it's a binary format now, they need to be. Able, they had to update uh, Wireshark to be able to like convert it to look like the old uh, spec, and also with some of the new features like flow control, prioritization, uh, server push. Which is actually really cool that I didn't get to hit. Um, so, no, one second. <laughs> um, so these are should be the most up to date. Twitter's nuts. They actually, uh, Cole, you you mentioned that maybe they might not. For some reason, everything that Twitter does can be handled through HTTP two, and the app is using HTTP two um, on your iOS or Android. They use HTTP2 right now. They were using Speedy. They were using it for earlier implementations. Um, uh, when the spec was coming out, it, you would uh, hit it at, uh, I think it was like uh, uh, release 7. Uh, it, it, it went through 15 different iterations just to get to its final form and published as a, uh, as a 7440, 7451, or 7450. Um, they were there implementing it on their servers, production servers, making sure that people can do it. Um, if you want to negotiate uh, HTTP2 uh, with a browser, like a, a browser, browsers that already have this should be um, Chrome at 40. Uh, Chrome is deprecating speed uh, over the next year. Um, Firefox, because Mozilla has been like at, at the back of this because um, it helps with a lot of security stuff. I should be writing this down so that I can hit them in a second. Server push and security things. Make sure that I uh, talk about those in a second, okay? Um, and then uh, what's nice, what's actually really nice is um, you can have an Apache server that says, hey, you just asked me for this file in HTTP 1.1, but if you would like, uh, we have this port open for for, we have this protocol for HTTP2, and your browser can handle it. Do you want to? Do you want to use that? So the browser will just say, "Oh, yeah, yeah, totally," and then switch to that protocol and start using it, um, and then remember that, and then start using it forever. Which is nice because that will make adoption quick and fast and easy. Um, servers like on GoDaddy, like you were talking about. What's your name? Sean. Sean. So servers that you have, like a, like say you have a site on. Uh, hosted on uh, GoDaddy, I have a site hosted on Rackspace, um, Heroku, their servers, uh, Flywheel, um, Huddle, they are going to have to, infrastructure people are going to have to make sure that their servers are um, uh, updated for HTTP2, whether it's through you know Node or um, the Apache implementation. Like that's something that they would do, like I host my, I host my stuff on 1.1 and uh, if, if, 
And so it's all stuff that they would have to do. There's nothing I can really do to my code or whatever. Or, you know, I can't change some file or have a group to say use HTTP2. The server would have to set that up. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. Uh, or is there a problem? Yeah, if it's if it's, it's if it's kind of shared hosting, exactly. Yeah. If it's shared hosting, uh, it's in their hands. Okay. It has to be in their hands okay. because that's a real way to respond. It is. Um, cool. um, so it, it might take them a while to drag it. Hopefully they don't. Because <laughs> this is going to really help me. Um, uh, so security. I want to choose security real quick. How much time do I have? I don't have like a number or ticker thing. Uh, I just keep rambling like a fucking crazy When people so start moaning, you gotta stop. You <laughs> could <laughs> go to the button app. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, security. So, Edward Snowden. Yeah. One of the things you guys have heard of this man, I hope. Who hasn't heard of Edward Snowden? <laughs> Scott? You're about to get a lecture. So. Uh, Edward Snowden released uh, an NSA stuff which basically says that all Americans are being surveilled. Or surveilled. Um, HTTP2, when they were building it, uh, or working on the RFC, which is just a document that says, this is how this works, this is where the responsibility lies. That's what an RFC is, it's just, this is how this thing works. Um, and it's a standard, everyone can use it, everyone should use it, or sometimes no. Um, so, they, it was like 2013 when Snowden happened, and uh, so we released this stuff, and then Mozilla, uh, Google, all these different people, Apple, they said, no, this can't happen. Um, we need to design something that makes it so that uh, NSA can't, uh, can't, or has a harder time uh, trying to get these get these communications in, in, uh, in the country and then out of the country. This solves a lot of that problem, especially with uh, TLS. Um, because they're making that mandatory. You could use HTTP2 without TLS, but they made that mandatory because the browser people feel like they have a responsibility to uh, people's security. So they want to make sure that that is uh, occurring, that, that, they, that they own that. Um, okay, okay, so I said the security thing and then server push. Server push basically is a really cool way of saying, you know how on, in PHP you can say, who, who writes PHP root whatever you say you have a git request that's basically talking with the server? Um, <coughs> server push makes it so you can say, hey, so you're delivering an HTML file to a client. You know the server, the server knows what stuff you're going to be requesting next because it's already inside of that document. You, you know, you're going to have a CSS file that says, uh, you're going to have a linked CSS file. It's in there. The server knows. What we want to be able to do is we want to say, hey, here's this HTML file, but also in cache, here's this CSS file. And you can start just pushing that stuff to them so that they're not actually opening any kind of um, request. They're just here. That's what we need, obviously. So take it. And that's great because this, the, then the client doesn't have to communicate inside of that one TCP connection and just here, here's all the stuff you need. But that, where that could go wrong is if it's cached on the client, but you have all these ways, and this is really what flow control and prioritization is good at. It makes it so that you can really fine tune and tweak um, what stuff is going to be delivered to a, a, a client. Um, and the client can say, no, I actually I, I don't want this stuff. I already have it. Thanks, but you're being a little too pushy. Okay, so any other questions? What browsers currently use HTTP2? Oh. Um, I am pretty sure it's all of them, yeah. Um, it's, except, obviously, like, one that doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I go. Um, so Safari doesn't have it, Safari, uh, no, Safari doesn't have it. Um, they actually had to build, like, what is it, Chrome? Well, they don't have Chrome. Whatever. So it's 50%. That's going to rise like fast because it's it's obviously important for American security <laughs> and um, and the speed of the internet and how things are going to be going. So the big the, the big companies are really going to be pushing this over the next year, um, and especially even more so moving forward. 
they're deprecating speed, they're pushing this, they're making it so that your SEO is gonna uh, be impacted if you don't have SSL. You know, they're pushing uh, server administrators or hosters to make sure that that stuff is up. They're, they're really pushing this. Um, so currently 50%. <laughs> Any other questions? I just want to know really quick, this is, the one I read up on this is basically from the sound that sounds like through this, I don't really need to combine all my JS and all my CSS into one file at nearly as much. Yes. How much of it, how much would it actually save me? Like, does, does it not, does, does it not give a crowd anymore if I don't combine, or does it help a little bit? Or with this new system, it's completely, like, flawless, like, if it was combined? Um, I'm not going to say flawless. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is going to, there is going to be an impact. But it is going to be so light uh, because instead of like like I was talking about, the process would be like a full loop where you open a TCP connection, close it, and then you have to when you open it, you wait for the download, and then you have to download all the headers, and the header stuff would be repeated. So you have to download a bunch of stuff in HTTP one. In HTTP two, you start, and then it just starts to push stuff back. And uh, generally, when you the numbers that I was seeing was. You can deploy this right out of the box, you're going to get like a 15% performance update or uh, uh, increase. Um, the, it, it, I mean, it's built specifically so that you can make your stuff modular. So you don't have to concatenate anymore. You don't have to combine a bunch of stuff. It's built to do that. So, and this may, may, may not be an HTTP2 question, but so would it actually be faster if I do have separate files? Like, can I, they all kind of download once in parallel? And since HTTP2 doesn't make it, if the headers a lot lighter weight, would it actually be faster if I do keep them separate? Or does that not matter so much? It'd be great, uh, especially if you're building like a puddle is a good example. They have uh, big sites. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a big site that maybe they need to deliver um, some stuff that's going to be for the football, some stuff that's going to be for the football. Uh, uh, <laughs> <Soccer. Okay>. uh, <laughs> um, and some of that code could be shared because it's a tool that uh, someone had the, what's the term? Uh, what's the term of the uh, group that you would work with? A foundation. Found foundation to build. Yeah. So they could have. Uh, all these different team teams could have this shared stuff, and they want to be able to make sure that all their stuff is updated, and they can still uh, work on stuff while all this other code, it makes it module. Um, uh, uh, oh god, what was your question? <laughs> is there any reason to make that so I can make it more? Dead code elimination. Sorry? Well, so, uh, uh, there's... Uh, dead code elimination? If Google has a compiler that will suck in all your JavaScript, compile it into Kind of into one file and eliminate all of the uh, un unused code. Oh, yeah. But that's something that happens in like every language, and some languages like I know Ruby and JavaScript that are interpreted from them. Dead code, I thought you said dead. Dead. Like the dead. 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 Yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. Um, code but it's just I mean, not. If you're going to rely on a whole bunch of JavaScript libraries, all of which might be several you know, 100k a piece. The last thing you want to do is download all of them and only use one or two functions out of each of them. So it'd be nice to be able to consolidate them all, pull out just functions you're using to get all of them files into the Also removing white space and comments. Yeah, it's still it's still completely totally worth it to minify files. Yeah, minify it. Yeah. Minify do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> um, okay, we do have a web service for uh, doing this dead code eliminations. There, Google Closure with an S. I like to get. Same thing with Huggle Fight Two. Two. Yes, we use that. Uh, check. What was it called? Huggle Fight Two. Huggle Fight. Yes, I use CodeKit, and I have to um, concatenate everything, and then CodeKit after it concatenates or before it concatenates, it looks at all files that's going to be combined. Make sure it's pretty with Huggle Fight, and then. Um, yeah, and IE8, 9, and 10 strip more than 31 style sheets at a time if you provide them, so you probably need to compile your style sheets. <laughs> or if you can't name at least. I've hit that one. So, IE what? IE8, 9, and 10. Oh. I guess it doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Is there anyone that runs IE that can't run another browser? <laughs> is there any way we're using the Unfortunately, I mean, that you care about is fun. Like, like someone's so trying to bash you. Yeah, unfortunately. Everybody in the corner. Yeah. 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 Any other questions about maybe workflow? Okay, not workflow. So, is it one request that we'd see in the browser when we download page then? That's the goal. It might not happen uh, because you might want to be able to close a TCP connection and open it again. But uh, what it would look like right now without clean Chrome, you know, this is how it works, is uh, or, um, without, clean, uh, without Chrome understanding HTTP2 like totally, it would probably look like one TCP connection open. But instead of a lot of teal, or what's the color? I think it's like brown. Are you talking about for downloading files or yep. blue? Or is it red? Uh, Matt Munger with that. The one blue. color. That color. The color oh. you're trying. XHRs. Oh. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> what's that word? Probably a web socket. <laughs> it's it's going to be actually kind of the same. As, I mean, you'll see all of the resources that you get inside of network, but network will, will be one. I don't know what it looks like right off the top of my head. So I guess another question would be, you know, I come across situations where I have to make, you know, like a hundred synchronous requests, getting like you know a thousand records of data. Is it then better to? So in that case, instead of sending each request each time, we would be wanting to open up streams to send that data instead. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about the picture element, and I don't know how this is going to work with HTTP2, but do you guys know what the picture element is? It's not like retina. Like you basically put a bunch of different images in there, yep. and then that way it allows for retina to work. I never used it, but I read a lot about it, but I never had it. It has support. ridiculously low support right now. Yeah. There's like some polyfills that fix it. But basically, yeah. It looks at the screen size and what the screen is really going to support. Uh, lowest, highest, and then pixel density, and it says, um, here's here's uh, what you really need. So it makes it so that you don't have to download a 13,000 million uh, pixel width uh, image. You can just select a bunch of million pixels. It's pretty big. Um, the picture element, I don't know if it's going to be able to like negotiate on HTTP2. Uh, my biggest question is, has anyone used the picture element? But <laughs> it's, it's not very old, so yeah. It's old. Like I said it's, it's a support thing. Is why I never used it. There's times where I wanted it's to do something for right now by head and go to like JavaScript alternatives and stuff, but. I didn't, yeah, I didn't use it just because it did not support, especially with IE, like 10 and stuff like that. I'm really curious how it's going to work for the conversation between the server, uh, or the, the browser and then the server. How, how does it work now? It works now by like downloading all the images. It's pretty much just like CSS media query uh, ish. The browser requests the image dependent upon the Yeah, but then the request it needs so it doesn't download all. all like if you have five different versions of the file. Only what it really means. Yeah, so just the, the one initial name, so this is what you're writing your your pixel does the your registration. Uh, okay, we have a bunch of a lot of pizza over there, so no one has any more questions.